Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. This is going to be a little bit of a different video than what we normally do, because today we're bringing you along with us as we work up corn that we're going to freeze. Now first I guess we should start by explaining what it means to work up corn. If you're not from the country, you may not have heard that expression. It just simply means to get something ready to preserve it. Today we're doing corn, and it just means that we're going to shuck it, we'll get the silks off, we're going to scrub it, we'll wash it good, make sure the silks are all off of it, then we'll process it to put in the freezer. And we're going to do that a couple of different ways. We will freeze some right on the cob, just like this. We will clean them really well, get all the silks off, wash them, and we will vacuum seal them in vacuum seal bags and put them straight into the freezer. Others, we're going to cut the corn off the cob and we will put about six ears, seven ears, eight ears, whatever we think it takes, into a baggie, freezer baggie, and we will freeze that to use later for fried corn. Now, speaking of fried corn, at the end of the video today, on this video, we are going to do our fried corn. So there will be a recipe. We are going to cook something, but it's going to be at the end of this video after we have worked up the corn. And we are going to take you through the entire process. You'll be with us while we shuck the corn. You're going to be with us as we wash the corn. You're going to be with us making sure the silks are off the corn. You're going to be with us for the whole process. So stay with us. If you want our recipe for fried corn, you need to just hang around today. Now, Melissa and I are only doing five dozen ears today, and that's really not very many. We found this corn. This is actually the first corn we have found this summer. Uh, we found it at our Mennonite store yesterday that's right up the road from our house, and I thought, okay, it's the first corn of the season. It may not be very good, but I'm going to take a chance. They had it by the ear, or you could buy a bag of five dozen ears. So I did buy a bag. You can see the bag here. And we're going to do that whole five dozen today. Well, five dozen minus two ears, because last night, Melissa and I had corn on the cob for dinner, so we had one each, and I'm gonna tell you, it was delicious corn. Really good corn. We were both pleasantly surprised that it was so good to be the first corn of the year. Now, when our kids were home, we would normally do around 25 to 30 dozen ears of corn, sometimes more than that because we ate corn at least once a week. If we did 25 to 30 dozen ears, that would give us somewhere between 50 and 60 quart bags of corn cut off the ears, and that would give us about one meal of corn a week to go with other things. Usually we had mashed potatoes because our youngest daughter thinks you can't eat corn without mashed potatoes and vice versa. So now that it's just Melissa and me, we really don't need 25 or 30 dozen ears. We just don't eat that much. Oh, look at this. This is a beautiful little ear of corn. Look what a nice ear. Ooh, I might have to save that one and have that for lunch after a while. Anyway, we just don't need... 25 or 30 dozen ears anymore since the kids aren't here. Although, Melissa, what did you say about the kids before we started filming? I said we have to take them a few bags of this frozen, so. Which means we're going to be doing more corn than we need because we're going to take some to the kids. But I know, anyway, but they're working. We have to help them out. You're right. You're right. So, for Melissa and me, we do about 25 dozen ears a summer. No. Since we it's you to. and me, we do about 15, don't we? So that doesn't take too long. It's not too bad. That's two or three days that we can work on corn. So anyway, today we're doing five. That means we'll need to do at least 
10 more just for the two of us, and I guess we're going to do more for the kids. So we're going to get this corn shucked and get it ready to wash. Make sure all the silks are off of it. Scrub it to get the silks off, and then we'll continue on the process. So give us just a few minutes to get the corn shucked. We have shucked all five dozen ears of corn, and the truth is that this is not the nicest corn we've ever had. The two ears that we shucked last night and had for dinner were really good, and some of this is really nice, but they are small ears. You can see here how small they are, and some of them are full. Some of them have a lot of bare spaces in them, but you know what? It's still going to go in the freezer, and it's going to be corn for the next year. So now that we have it all shucked, we have to brush the corn, and I've just got this little corn brush, and you, <laughs> you can see we've about worn this brush out. I'm probably going to need to order another one today, or three. Um, and this is just to get the silks out from between the corn. I don't know if you can see this, Melissa. Can you see that silk? So those get down in between the rows of corn, and you just have to brush the corn and get those silks loose and get them off there. Sometimes they'll just fall off while you're brushing it. Other times you have to pick them off, and that's just the way it is. So let's see if I see any sticking out. I don't. I think I got them all. Now we need to trim the sticks stalk end of the corn. We just want that big hard stalk off there if it didn't break off while you were shucking it. And now we need to wash the corn. So we'll just run it under water, wash it really well. And this needs to be dried before we vacuum seal it if we're going to vacuum seal it on the cob. So we'll need to let that dry or we'll need to take a, a towel and dry it. So we need to do all five dozen ears before we can go on to the next step. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep working on brushing and washing the corn on the cob. So we have some of our corn already washed. We have all the silks off and they're ready to put into um, vacuum seal bags and ready to process. So I always make sure to write on the bag, and I know it's pretty obvious that there's corn in there, but I always write on the bag, and I always put the date so that we know when we put it in there. So that's all I do here, corn, July 2024. Then we just put the corn in the bags, and we will process them or we'll vacuum seal them. Now, I will tell you that these bags are a little hard to get the corn down in like this. They, I don't know, they want to stick to the inside of the bag, but you just have to work them down in there. Works just fine. Usually the first one and the last one are the hardest ones to get in, but that's okay, they'll go. You just have to work on them a little bit, get them down in there and then you can vacuum seal them. So I just take the vacuum sealer, put the bag down in the vacuum tray and let it seal. You can see that it's sucking all the air out. Seal those up nice and tight, no air in there. They should not have any kind of ice particles collect in there because all the air is out. And now they can go straight into the freezer, just the way they are. And I did put four in this bag, which is how we always did it when the kids were at home because we always needed four ears. So I thought, I'm gonna put four in one. I guess the night we eat this, we'll either have to wait until we have company or we'll eat two ears each, huh? <laughs> We've done that many times, haven't we? We love corn on the cob. Followed by dessert of watermelon. Oh, wait a minute. Seasons just right. Okay, so 
we're going to let those finish sealing and then we will come back and cut some off the cob and put it in baggies. All right, the next thing we're doing is cutting some corn off the cob and bagging it up to put in the freezer. So I just blanch six ears at a time. We put them in for three minutes, take them out, let them cool for just a few minutes, just until they're cool enough to handle, really. And I want you to look what a, temp what a color change these have when you drop them in. Look at the difference in that color. As soon as you drop them in, they start to change. So three minutes, and while those are blanching for three minutes, we'll start cutting these six off the cob. Now, I will tell you that I have never done this in my entire life. Melissa is always the cutter. So I'm not really sure that I'm doing this right. I don't know how close I'm supposed to cut it, but I'm doing what I can. Somebody didn't want to be on camera, right, babe? I am the videographer. But I have never done this part. This is something she's always done. So, I'll tell you that corn <laughs> does have a tendency to bounce around when it's cut off the cob. It's kind of like those bouncy balls we used to have as kids. They just kind of go all over the place. We scrape the cobs too. Oh, well, see, told you. I didn't know what I was doing. Like that. That's it. She just wants me to do this so the next time she can say, you know how to do it, you did it. You married a genius. That's what I've been told. <laughs> so we will cut this off and scrape the cobs. And then we're going to bag this corn and put it in the freezer. So we will continue to do that. And then we'll show you how we bag it up and put it in the freezer. So we have cut some corn off the cob. And now we're just bagging it up. We put about six ears per bag. And that is plenty of corn for Melissa and me. Honestly, with six ears per bag, that will do us for a couple of meals because we normally just eat one ear each. So six ears in a bag will give us at least two good meals. Now, you might be asking, why are you freezing it and not canning it? Well, that's because of me. I think Melissa's fine with canning it, aren't you? I like it both ways, but growing up, my mom always froze it too. Yeah. My parents always canned it. And I feel like it's my opinion that corn that's been processed in a pressure canner is tough. I just don't care for it. I like it better if it's frozen. So Melissa and I have always just frozen the corn. That's just my preference. I think Melissa's okay with it either way, but I really prefer it frozen to being canned. Uh, I, we have friends who can their corn, and they have said, why do you freeze it? What if your freezer goes out? What if you lose all your corn? Well, that's a possibility. But if I lose all my corn, I'm gonna lose everything else in my freezer too. So it's just, you know, one of those things you really can't, can't help it and you can't stop it, but if I'm going to eat it, I much prefer frozen corn to canned corn. Now we can a lot. We can tomatoes, tomato juice, green beans. We do jams and jellies. We do little new potatoes and lots of things like that. So, we do can. We do a lot of canning. But corn's just not one of them. Now, I do my best to get the air all out of the bag, and then I just flatten it out. And we do put it in the freezer, stacked flat like this, because it just stacks better. 
if you set it up on its bottom and all the corn goes to the bottom, then it's hard to get it to stack. And by placing it in bags that way, it stacks up real nice in the freezer. It doesn't take up as much room. So we're going to finish processing the rest of this corn. And then we're going to show you how we do our fried corn. I think you also need to talk about your little gadget that you hold the bag up. With. Oh, this? Somebody will probably ask. Yeah, this is the handiest thing in the world. I got this at Walmart. It was in the canning section at Walmart, but they're available online. It just has two little arms and you can extend them for whatever size bag you're using. And it just holds your bag open while you're filling it. And I use this for all kinds of things, <laughs> including I put one down and I use this to hold a recipe. I can just stick a recipe up in there and hold a recipe while I'm cooking or if I'm piping it up or whatever. So this is the handiest little gadget that ever was. I, I don't know that I could stand to be without it. So Walmart in the canning section or online, you can get it on Amazon. All right, we'll be back to do our fried corn. We have all the corn processed. We got seven bags of corn, and then we put three bags in the freezer with corn on the cob. So I guess technically we got 10 bags, but normally out of five dozen ears, we should get about 10 bags of corn cut off. So that tells you that this corn on the cob was a little bit small and it wasn't quite full, but that's to be expected with a first picking of corn. Okay, we're going to make fried corn. So let's get started. First, let's talk about what we're gonna use. It's pretty simple. We're using a bag of corn. We're using half a stick of butter. We're going to put a little bit of water in it in the bottom, and we're going to put some salt. How much salt? I don't know. That's going to have to be up to you. You're going to have to decide how much you want in your corn. I am of the opinion that corn and potatoes need a lot of salt. So if I'm cooking corn or potatoes, I'm going to use a lot. Now, normally I would not bag up a bag of corn and immediately fry it. It would go in the freezer and we would do this later, but I wanted to go ahead and show you how we do this. So I'm just gonna use a bag that we just did rather than a bag that's already in our freezer. And we do have a few bags of corn left from last summer. So I just wanna stir that corn up. And you already had your butter melted. I did, I had half a stick of butter melted in there already. And I'm just going to stir that up because I wanna get that butter all over that corn. I wanna make sure it's good and buttery. Now, we're using half a stick of butter, but if you're using a lot of corn, you'll want to increase that amount of butter because you want your corn to be good and buttery. Now, I'm just going to add a little water to the bottom because we don't want our corn to burn. So we'll just add a little bit of water there and we're going to add some salt. Don't have a heart attack on me. I know that's quite a bit of salt, but that may not even be enough. Now, you see all that liquid in the bottom where I just put that water in there with the butter? That has to fry out. We want it to be not completely dry, but we don't want it to be standing in that liquid. So I'm going to turn my heat up to about medium high and we're going to start cooking this. Um, I was gonna say something else and I lost my train of thought. You just wanna make sure that your corn is, oh, I know what I was gonna say. This is not creamed corn. I can already hear some people saying, well, that's not how I make creamed corn. This is not creamed corn. This is what we call fried corn. Cream corn is a complete recipe. This is just butter, water, salt, and I'm probably even gonna sprinkle a little sugar on it before we're finished. We'll see, it depends on how sweet the corn is. And this corn's good. Melissa and I even had an ear for lunch today. We had an ear last night and an ear for lunch today, but I'm probably gonna sprinkle just a little sugar on it. But that's it, that's how you fry corn. So we'll just let it keep frying. A 
wanted to show you that there is still a little bit of liquid in here. I'm gonna pull the corn back and show you. You can see that there is some liquid still down in there, but nothing like there was when we started. And I have tasted it, and it is not as sweet as what most corn is, so I am going to add just a couple spoonfuls of sugar. Now you can add it to your taste, to your liking. Get that sugar off my spoon. And we're just going to stir that in. And we'll continue cooking it for a few minutes just to get the rest of that liquid or most of that liquid out of there. I think our corn has fried enough, you can see there's still just a tad bit liquid in it, but not like there was to start with. And Melissa made a good point. You don't want to cook it until it's completely dry or your corn will be, get gummy. It gets really sticky and you don't want that. So you don't want to cook it completely dry. All right, we're gonna put just a little in a bowl to taste. I think we put enough salt and sugar on it. If not, we can always adjust that. Man, that looks good. You taking the first bite? Sure. Too hot? Mm, no, it's just good. It's enough delicious. salt, enough sugar? I think it's perfect. Mm. Nothing like fresh corn. That is absolutely perfect. Wow, that is so good. <laughs> I could eat that for every meal. Actually, Melissa told you earlier, we have made a meal just out of corn. Mm. That's delicious. All right, I know this has been a different kind of video showing you how we process and freeze our corn. But, and I know most of you know how to do that, but there are some people that may not know how to process and freeze corn, and so we just wanted to share our method, show how we do it. There is one other thing I wanted to tell you about. I saw a video a few days ago, actually I've seen it for a while, where you can take a corn, a corn on the cob, ear of corn, that's not been shut and put the whole thing in the microwave for four minutes. You can do two ears at a time, but then you put it in for eight minutes. And when it's finished, you just cut off the stalk end, hold it up so that the, the um, silks are at the top and shake it. And that corn falls out of those shucks completely clean, no silks. Melissa and I did it last night just to see if it worked. It worked perfectly. So if you're only going to cook one or two ears of corn, and you don't want to shuck it and silk it and all that, throw it in the microwave the way it is, four minutes per ear, you'll have great corn. It really worked. All right, thank you so much for watching our video. We hope you will freeze some corn. If you've never done that, there's nothing like in the middle of January and February when the snow's blowing, having good fresh corn in your freezer that you can get out and fry or cook and enjoy. So freeze some corn. It's not that hard. We do appreciate you watching. We would appreciate you going right below this video and clicking the like button. And if you haven't before, click that subscribe button, the little notification bell in the word all. Remember that right under the video, Melissa will put a description. <laughs> I don't know. It won't be a recipe, but we'll try to put a description of how we do our corn, how we process it and freeze it. And then our contact information will be under that. And of course, there's always a place at the bottom where you can leave a comment and we would love to hear from you. Let us know if this is how you process and freeze your corn or whether you can it or how do, how do you do corn if you're going to preserve it for later? What do you do with it? We'd love to hear those ideas. All right, thanks again for watching. We want you to remember that you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.